what is the real cost of selling a house as is? How much money do you stand to lose if you decide not to make any repairs or any updates to a home that you're selling? If you're getting a home ready to sell, I don't want you to leave any money on the table, but I also don't want to add any stress to any situation that you're going through. Not only is every house unique and different, but every situation is unique and different. I'm going to go over some general rules that you can follow, but I also want you to stay tuned because I'm going to give you a secret strategy. This is not only going to help you make a decision whether selling as is is right for you in your house and your situation, but this secret strategy will also give you leverage when you are negotiating with home buyers. First, let's talk about what an as is sale really is. And truly, every sale is an as is sale. You're accepting the house in its current condition. But when you are putting that language and you are marketing a home as an as is sale, you're letting buyers know ahead of time that you're not intending to make any repairs or updates to the home. The hope is that the buyer is accepting the home in its current condition, that they're not going to come back at a later time and renegotiate repair items or a lower purchase price because of items that need to be repaired or updated. And as is sale does not mean that a seller is off the hook from having to disclose known facts about the property. Even if you're selling the home as is and the buyer is accepting it in its current condition, you still have to disclose items to the buyer that you know that are not working. For example, if the oven isn't working or if there's a roof leak in a closet or if the fence is falling down or any pool equipment isn't working, all of those things still need to be disclosed to the buyer. And with an as is sale, a buyer still has the right and opportunity to conduct any inspections and investigations at the property. A buyer may still want to do a general home inspection or a pest inspection or a roof inspection so that it helps them budget any necessary repairs in the future. Now that you know what an as-is sale is or isn't, is it right for you? And the only answer that I can give is it depends. It depends on several factors. And the first factor really is what's happening in the market. Are we in a seller's market where there's really not a lot of inventory and there's not a lot for buyers to choose from? Or are we in a buyer's market where there's a lot of inventory and a lot of houses for buyers to choose from? It's also important to know who is the buyer in that particular market. It used to be not too long ago that buyers didn't mind purchasing a house that needed a little bit of fixing up because they liked the idea of having built-in equity. But in this market, we're seeing a lot of millennial and Gen Z buyers that are entering the marketplace and they tend to just like to drop their bags and go. They prefer homes that are ready for them just to move in and not have to worry about making any repairs at all. But in this market, we also still have quite a few investors who could be cash buyers that have short time frames and are ready to close quickly. And that investor is also looking for a good profit margin. And the next factor to consider is something you hear all the time in real estate and it is location, location, location. If the home is located in a highly sought after or desirable neighborhood, sometimes buyers are a little more willing to overlook some minor repairs and minor updates that need to be done in order to get into that neighborhood. Another factor to consider is the condition of the home. And Captain Obvious is going to tell you that the better the condition of the home, the closer to market value you're going to get. There's nothing that you did know there. The condition of the home will also determine how big the buyer pool is for that home as well. For example, a buyer that is getting FHA or VA financing, well, those loans have pretty strict conditions that the house has to meet in order to qualify for an FHA or VA financing. If the heater or oven doesn't work or the roof is leaking or there's a lot of dry rot damage, these items may be called out and need to be repaired prior to the buyer being able to purchase that property. And in a lot of cases, home buyers have scrapped and saved for years and years to buy a home and they just don't have extra cash to invest in any repairs. Something else to consider regarding the condition of the home, if it's recently been updated or it's a newer build, buyers will tend to overlook some minor repairs that need to be done. If it needs to be repainted or the cabinets are a little worn and torn, a buyer sometimes will overlook those things 
because the home itself is pretty well updated and new. The next factor to consider whether or not you want to sell your house as is, is the cost to repair. But it's not only the dollar amount that it's going to cost you to repair certain items. It is the time it's going to take to repair those items. As your home is being repaired, you still have to pay property taxes and utilities and homeowners insurance. We call those carrying costs. All those things need to be factored into the cost of repairs, which takes me to the next factor to consider, and that is your time. If you decide to make repairs or updates to the house before putting it on the market, it is going to take time to make those repairs. But if you decide not to, the house may sit a little bit longer if it's not repaired or updated. And really, we just need to go back to the market condition and see what's happening in the market. Are homes that are not repaired sitting a little longer? And how much longer are they sitting? Depending on the market, a home that is not repaired or updated may take just a little bit longer to sell. Selling a home as is could mean that you're leaving money on the table. In our experience, a home that has not been updated or repaired sells for about 10 to 30 percent below market value of comparable homes that have been updated or repaired that's really going to be up to you to weigh your options if you decide that selling as is is the best option for you there are things that you could do to help boost your sales price and just start out by making the house shiny you're going to need to pack up all the personal belongings anyway declutter and just do a deep clean there's something about shiny clean windows that just makes a house feel good Painting is another thing to consider. It's amazing what a fresh coat of neutral color paint does to a home. It makes it feel clean and more modern. And the third thing that you could do to help boost the sale is to consider curb appeal. I did a video on that that talks about why the first impression is so important. A buyer carries that inside with them. Next is consider doing any small repairs. If there's a leaking faucet or a wobbly toilet or if there's any holes in the wall that need to be patched, consider doing any minor repairs. Number five is offering incentives to a buyer. Things like a home warranty or offering to cover their closing costs or even an interest rate buy down. Things like that may attract a different pool of buyers. Another thing to consider to boost the sale of the property is to offer creative financing. And these might be things like offering a lease option or seller financing, or if you have an assumable mortgage, those may be in incentives that we can offer to a buyer to attract a different pool of buyers as well. And if you've never heard those terms before, I don't want you to just cancel it as an option. There are ways with those creative financing that you as a seller may be able to make more money over time, but it just depends on your unique situation and if it is something that you want to explore. So if it's something that you're interested in, please give us a call and we are happy to go over what options you may have available for you. It really comes down to weighing the risks and the rewards, but you need to know what the risks and rewards are and what options are available to you in order to be able to weigh them out for your situation. And now I want to get into my secret strategy that I promised you earlier. It's really a simple strategy. It's a two-step process. The first step is to have an idea of what the market value is of the house, but you want two market values. You want its current condition, the value in its current condition, and it's after repair value if it needs major repairs. Now, this isn't going to be something that you can get online from Zillow or another company like that. It's going to take a real estate professional coming into the house and taking a look at the condition that the property is in and then going back to MLS and taking a look at comparable properties in that area. Then we analyze the data. What is happening in the market at this time? Who are the buyers? How long are homes sitting? How many homes are on the market? If you're in the Sacramento area, we can certainly help you with this. And if you're outside of the Sacramento area, still give us a call because we can still connect you with a real estate professional that's in your area. And once you have the market analysis, step number two to the secret strategy is getting bids on any repair items that need to be done. Not only will this help you see in black 
black and white, whether it's worth it to do the repairs. For example, a, a garage door may cost $4,600 to replace, but it could add $10,000 in value to your home. On the other hand, a full bathroom remodel could cost $25,000, but it would only add $12,000 value to the home. Yes, having those bids helps you decide whether or not it's worth it to make the repairs before putting your house on the market. But here's the other thing it does. If you decide to sell your house as is, having bids for repairs gives you leverage when you are negotiating with home buyers. And that's the secret sauce.